Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India new lecture of the course fundamentals and applications of dielectric ceramics so let's just briefly recap what we did in the last class so in the last class we did a um, treatment of uh, ionic or electronic polarizability The first treatment that we did in that we found that you know ionic and electronic polarizabilities are temperature independent and we also did not look at the frequency dependence we just did it at the DC uh, the DC conditions we saw that uh, electronic polarizability is proportional to R cube that is the size of uh, ionic species uh, uh, size of the atom and then ionic is, uh, polarizability was inversely proportional to the modulus. But then we did uh, took it a step further and we did frequency dependence by applying a sinusoidally varying electric field and considering the electron cloud and the nucleus or the ions as connected through a spring in the form of a simple harmonic oscillator. As a result we wrote the equation of motion and then we solved it for a displacement x and then based on that we calculated what is the so uh, dielectric uh, what is the polarizability. So, polarizability was worked out as um, alpha <coughs> i was q i square divided by m into omega o i square minus omega square plus um, i gamma i omega. This is what we worked out and from this we can also work out what is the so, from this one can work out what is the polarization. So, this is alpha i star of course, it is a complex quantity. So, we can work out what is polarization. Polarization will be n alpha e where n is the number of dipoles per unit volume and then when you do the separation of uh, real and imaginary part and then we can relate polarization to susceptibility. Susceptibility can give rise to what is epsilon r and we found expressions for epsilon r. So, epsilon r infinity was equal to 1 plus n into q i square divided by m i epsilon naught into omega o i square minus omega square divided by omega o i square minus omega square to the power 2 plus gamma square omega square bracket closed and sorry this was the real part ok real and then imaginary part was n into q i square divided by m i epsilon naught into gamma omega divided by omega o i square minus omega square to the power 2 plus gamma square omega square ok. So, this was the expression that we got and basically this suggests that in the denominator you have this term omega o i minus omega square. So, the resonance will happen when your omega in omega is equal to omega o i. So, your dielectric constant has to be measured at frequencies which are lower than this omega o i. The moment frequency is higher than the omega o i the, the dipoles do not corresponding dipoles do not respond to the frequency as a result they do not contribute to the dielectric constant. So, when you plot these dielectric constants. So, when you plot these epsilon r prime as a function of frequency then we see uh, something like that. So, this could be so if it is for electronic then this would be 1 and this would be uh, epsilon r electronic ok and this frequency would be omega o e correspondingly right and at this point we will have the a maxima in the epsilon r double prime ok. 
and correspondingly if you plot tan delta which is equal to epsilon r double prime by epsilon prime you will see a peak in tan delta as well. So, basically what happens is that above this frequency omega o e the dipoles are not able to keep pace with the frequency of the applied field as a result they do not respond. So, you have to go to frequencies below omega o e for electronic dipoles to dis respond. So, then only they will be able to contribute to the dielectric constant. Similarly, when you go below this for ionic if I now make similar plot in the blue color as ionic this frequency would be omega o i and here it would be epsilon r electronic and here it would be epsilon r ionic. Okay. So, this is how it will change as a function of frequency when you measure this dielectric constant and another simple um, argument that one can look at is say this uh, this vibrational frequency basically this is a frequency right. So, frequency can be written as omega naught can be written as square root of k divided by m right this is from classical mechanics. So, basically if you if you balance the uh, force that is inducing the moment and the restoring force you will get the value of a spring constant and this omega naught works out to about. Uh, so, if you just consider it as a spring har simple harmonic oscillator with a certain value of k then omega naught can be determined to be so about in about 15 hertz for electronic polarization and then about in about 13 hertz for ionic polarization and that sort of makes sense because the mass of electrons is uh, uh, far lower than the mass of uh, ions put together right. So, as a result the frequency is down and since there is a square root you can see that it must be about few orders of magnitude smaller. Okay. And another thing that you notice is that the frequency here for ionic polarization is about in about 13 hertz which is similar to basically natural frequency for natural frequency of vibrations right natural frequency of vibration that is vibrations is about so ions vibrating means lattices vibrating right so this is about and about 13 hertz for lattice vibration so basically uh, this shows that whatever we have done is fairly right and as you go to very high frequencies naturally the dipoles don't respond so as a result epsilon r is equal to epsilon r infinity is equal to 1 at frequencies greater than 10 to the power 15 hertz because nothing none of the polarization mechanism is able, able to keep pace with the applied electric field as a result you have 0 uh, contribution from them. All right, So, now so essentially basically you have you can summarize this part as that for electronic polarization omega critical frequency that the resonance frequency is omega o electronic. So, as long as your frequency is lower than this frequency your dipoles will respond. And for ionic polarization your frequency is lower than omega o uh, I which is lower than omega O electronic. Okay. So, and what this means is that your uh, ionic dipoles will respond and correspondingly at the resonance frequency we will see a maximum in the epsilon r that is epsilon r double prime. So, at you will have a resonance and maxima in epsilon r double prime. Okay, so, this is a very simple analysis for basically let us say this is a simple analysis for electronic and ionic polarization given their frequency dependence. And you can also convert these equations to find out what happens when omega is equal to 0. When omega is equal to 0, you should be able to 
convert them to similar DC equations that we worked out earlier. So, basically alpha electronic should should reduce to 4 pi epsilon naught r cube. Okay. So, that is what it should happen. So, that I will leave it to you for working out. Now, let us look at the treatment of dipolar relaxation. So, basically frequency dependence of dipolar relaxation and this is also called as often Debye relaxation in the name of Debye and this is valid for mainly we can say polar solids and this could be variety of uh, ceramics. dielectric ceramics, glasses and very many other systems. But uh, so here we do not use that damped oscillator approach rather we used a, a relaxed relaxation uh, approach where some entity goes from one position to another position relaxing from one to another. So here what we will say is that uh, the movement of charges, the movement of a species let us say. occurs over larger distances than uh, as compared to electronic and ionic. So, it could be a few atomic distances and as a result the phenomena is is diffusional in nature. So, basically suppose you have a charge dipole like this, it was earlier in this fashion, now it has to move. So, this is the first position, now it has to move to this position. Okay. So, essentially it goes from this position to that position mu. So, all these atoms have to now hop from this position to, so this atom has to come from this position to this position correspondingly this atom has to go from this position to that. So, everything has to rotate in a matrix and this could mean the translation of atoms could be fairly large of the order of atomic spacing or even higher. So, basically energetically speaking you can represent this process as the, the species overcoming several energy barriers. So, when you plot this as a function of distance. And that is why these processes are diffusional nature or they follow Arrhenius kind of uh, relaxation. So, here suppose you can plot this as you can have scenarios like and so on and so forth. So, you might have transition for example, from this state to this state, you might have transition from this state to this state, you might have transition from this state to this state depending upon the type of solid whether you have a glassy solid, whether you have a crystalline solid. In crystalline solid there will be more ordered movements, in glassy solid there will be more disordered movements, but nevertheless it goes from one stable position to or one metastable position to another metastable position. These are all metastable positions right in the free energy landscape. So, as a result the for a species to change its configuration from let us say 1 to 2, this is 1 let us say this is 2 they have to overcome a energy barrier. So, this is energy barrier which has to be overcome. So, when they go from 1 to 2 they cross this energy barrier then 2 to 3 again there is energy barrier then 3 to 4 again there is an energy barrier. So, as a result uh, there is a there is a considerable slowness as compared to the previous because everything is it has to diffuse from one, one place to another another to another diffusion is a basically Arrhenius phenomena. So, when the diffusion, so if you look at the lattice for example, so when this atom moves from this place to another, this place, so basically it undergoes energy barrier because the transitions that take place in the middle, they dilate the lattice. As a result, there is a sort of temporary generation of strain in the lattice, it has to overcome. So, it has to break one, one bond form another bond as a result there is a activation energy you can say Q that is needed for transition to occur. 
Similarly, in this fashion it has to go from one position to another as a result the process is sort of diffusional in nature requiring an activation energy barrier to be crossed. So, here let us say the case of ionic solids so considering a cases of ionic solids. So, so when you apply electric field now you apply an electric field now as compared to this relaxation the frequency scale at which ionic and electronic polarization will develop will be very fast. So, basically when you apply electric field you will develop almost instantaneously almost instantaneously you will develop a electronic and ionic polarization right because they are very fast. So, when you apply let us say a field of frequency 10 to the power 6 or 10 to the power 7 hertz which is very fast as compared to 10 to the power 13 hertz right you can see that there is a magnitude of difference 7 orders of magnitude difference. So, when you apply frequency electric field of this sort of frequency then it then generation of electronic and ionic polarization will be almost immediate. So, when you now plot this polarization as a function of so let us say I plot polarization as a function of time then almost instantaneously I have a contribution from electronic ionic let us say this is p electronic plus p ionic and the saturation polarization then develops over a function of time. So, let us say this is the value of saturation polarization in a given system the maximum value of polarization that you can get and this thing takes its own time to develop eventually it does reach the value, but it takes time and this is the dipolar polarization which is time dependent polarization P d t. So, as compared to electronic and ionic part this development is far more slower. Okay. So, molecules basically you can say this is a molecule in this fashion this molecule has to now rotate to go to this position. Okay. So, this is what uh, and this you apply electric field it has to come to this direction, but it has to rotate it has, it has to undergo a rotation in the matrix or in the in the structure. So, correspondingly if we assume this model to be true then we can so rate of change of polarization can be So, we write the rate of change of polarization as d p by d t is equal to 1 over tau p s minus p d t. So, where 1 over tau is basically a proportionality constant and this equation is called as relaxation. or basically it will come to be as time constant tau okay, which is proportionality constant. So, this is basically this model is sort of called as bi stable model uh, where you go from one stable state to another stable state. So, the basically this change in polarization P s minus P d right. So, in essentially you are looking at the rate of change of polarization within this regime and at any given time the polarization is P d t and uh, when you reach here then of course at very large times when p s p d is equal to p s then rate of change is equal to 0 right the slope is equal to 0. So, that is what it represents d p by d t is equal to 1 over tau into p s minus p d t. So, now so we call this model as bi stable model. Okay. So, basically what we are saying is that you have a charge dipole like this whose orientation was like this and now this charge dipole changes its orientation and the orientation changes. So, this is position 1 this is position 2. Okay. So, let us say if I make it little colored just for the sake of illustration. and this is where you apply electric field. Okay. 
So, essentially we are considering so energy landscape can be plotted as let us say this is position 1, this is some position 2. So, this is position 1, this is position 2 and it has to overcome an energy barrier. So, if you look at from this side the energy barrier will be this E A and if you look at from this side the energy barrier would be this much and this distance between the two is equal to let us say delta. Okay. This is the distance between the two positions. Okay. So, this is position 1 corresponding to that position 2 corresponding to this. So, this is position 2, this is position 1. So, when you apply electric field to such a polar material, then ions hop from one position to another position. So, this could be for example, in glasses you have silver ion conductor, sodium ion conductors etcetera, it could be dielectrics, it could be ice uh, structure or water molecules, various materials which are polar in nature will show similar kind of behavior. So, so as you see, so So, so we can see in the previous image that cations are, so let us say it is related to cations. So, cations are moving from uh, or let us say instead of saying cations, let us just say species okay, because it could be anything. So, species are moving from left to right okay. and temperature is greater than 0 k. This is what we have to first see. So, so as a result there is a rand, so when the temperature is uh, greater than 0 k which means there is a random oscillation also right. R random oscillation of a species between because when your temperature is greater than 0 degree centigrade, the atoms or molecules will vibrate as a result there will be equal probability, there will be a probability of rightward movement, there is a probability of leftward movement as well which is basically uh, true for any solid. So, now let us calculate what is the probability of jump between the sides. So, when we look at the probability of jump between the sides, let us define this as F. We could have written as P, but P is something that we have defined for polarization. So, let us not confuse. So, let us say this is A into exponential of minus E A divided by K B T. So, this A is uh, something here that we will see later on, but let's, let us say for, for now the A is some sort of constant. Okay and E A is the activation energy or the barrier which a species have to overcome to move from one position to another. K is the Boltzmann constant, T is the temperature and A is some d exponential factor. So, when you apply electric field, so this is symmetric, let us say you have a situation like this where the wells are symmetric. Okay. So, on both sides the energy barrier will be similar. So, this is symmetric to begin with and from when you go from 1 to 2 or 2 to 1, they have to face the similar E A. Okay. So, as a result you can see if you go from 2 to 1 or 1 to 2 the probability will be same. Now, when you apply electric field, so electric field will be in certain direction as a result the wells will tilt. Right. So, you might have a situation like this or you might have a situation like this. Right. So, you can see that there is a asymmetry in the energy barrier. So, when you look at situations like this, you can see for atoms to hop from this side to this side the energy barrier is lower whereas, from 2 to 1 the energy barrier is larger. Now, in or in the converse case the hopping from 1 to 2 is more difficult, but 2 to 1 is easier because the energy barriers are now. So, basically application of electric field basically leads to tilting of energy wells leaving asymmetry in 
activation energy barriers. So, when depending upon 1 to 2 and 2 to 1 when the magnitude of E a has changed which means the probability also has changed. So, which means f 1 to 2 will not be the same as f 2 to 1. So, in this case when it is symmetric then f 1 2 is equal to f 2 1 right. The probability of when the, there is no field it is same probability that is why you do not see your overall diffusion. But here now that you have applied a force which is let us say electric force in this case like electrical force then f 1 2 is not equal to f 2 1 there is a asymmetry in E a magnitude as a result E a 1 to 2 is not equal to E a 2 to 1 and this leads to asymmetry in the probability of jump as a result you will have a net flow of dipoles right net flow of a species from one to another. So, let us say we calculate this f 1 2 is equal to 1 minus mu e divided by k t. So, initial was f 1 2 was equal to this and f 2 1 was equal to 1 my so this. So, one of them will be plus one of them another would be minus and let us say so this would be 1 plus Okay. So, on one side you have added the energy on the other side you have subtracted the energy. So, this is what we will take it further. So, we have run out of time now. So, I will just summarize what we have done is we have just taken the rel simple bistable relaxation model where we are saying that uh, when you apply electric field of certain frequencies the dipoles move from one position to another position this is basically at lower frequencies. So, when you apply such a low frequencies the electronic and ionic polarization will develop almost instantaneously, but the dipolar polarization will be time dependent polarization and this will happen on a much longer time scale. So, as a result uh, your, your is and why, why this happens is because you have a species moving from one position to another position and there is a uh, and this process is called as a relaxation and they have to overcome energy barrier and since they are moving from one place to another place there is a possibility of movement back movement as well because the process is diffusional. So, we need to calculate the probabilities of movement from one side to another from one to another and uh, so 1 to 2 and 2 to 1 and we have to calculate the net flow of dipoles from 1 to 2 and 2 to 1. So, this is where we are right now we will look at this uh, a little later uh, when we uh, in the next lecture. Okay. So, thank you very much.